Good afternoon, guys. This is Sami from Aussies Migration and Education Consultants from Auckland here. Now, as promised, so we will be discussing uh, details uh, on the dependent visa types. And as you may know, if you've started the process or if you're thinking of losing a dependent visa for your partner, then you would have realized or you would have noticed that there are many different categories and different options. Uh, and it's often quite confusing in terms of which one should you be going for. So what I intend to do in today's video is I intend to go through all these different categories and which category should you be applying for depending on the situation uh, you're currently in. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video, but before we go any further, I would like to put this disclaimer through. Uh, the information we provide in this video is in no way an immigration advice, and if you need any assistance, we are licensed immigration advisors, and you can give us a call on 0800 287 749. So with dependent visas, uh, that are, as I said, that are different categories, and <clears throat> depending on, on what visa your partner holds in New Zealand, you'll have to choose an appropriate category for uh, your partner to come and visit you or to come and stay with you. So the first popular visa category is uh, for someone who's already here on a student visa and they intend to bring their partner over to New Zealand, either to work or to visit. So under that category, so if you are a student visa holder, <clears throat> then depending on what level of course you're doing currently, if you are enrolled in a level eight course, which is a postgraduate course, then you can bring your partner under partner of a student work visa that means that your partner can come here and work while you study but if you are doing a course under student visa which is for level seven or below then you can bring your partner but your partner will have to come here on a visitor visa so the two categories are for the student visa holders one is partner of a student work visa and the other one is partner of a student visitor visa. Now, the difference between the two is pretty straightforward. In one visa type, which is partner of a student visitor visa, your partner can only come and visit you. But in the other category, your partner has work rights and he or she can work full time while you study. In both cases though, the immigration first will assess your partnership and this is where the most confusion is. So a lot of the time when the couples are not, uh, the, the, the marriage is not old or if you're newly married, then the question arises in terms of which is the best visa for you. So what New Zealand terms as partnership is you have to be living together in a genuine and stable relationship. So very important. So basically, you not only should be in a genuine or stable relationship, you should also be living together when you apply for a visa based on partnership. So <clears throat> let's say that you have been newly married and you then your partner right after the marriage came to New Zealand to continue the study or to continue the work and now they want to call their partner from offshore, then they will have to see how much have they actually lived together before they make this application. Now, if you are newly married or if you've just started living together, then it is not very likely that Immigration New Zealand can assess you for partner of a student work visa, even though you may be doing a level eight or above course. So let's say that your partner is enrolled for a master's course, which is level nine, or even a postgrad course, which is level eight. But if you've just been married, then it is very likely that you would be advised to apply for partner of a student visitor's visa. And the reason is you first have to fulfill a condition which is stipulated by immigration of living together. So once your partner comes over and starts staying with you, maybe within three or four months time, you can consider 
making an application for partner of a student work visa. So that's that's what you need to pay attention to. So basically for student visa holders, you can consider two options. If you have been married for a long time and you have lived together and you can show evidence that you have been living together or have lived together in the past for a substantial time. And as a rule of a thumb, substantial time would probably mean anything that is more than six months. Then you can think about consider you can think about lodging an application for a student partner of a student work visa. That is if your partner is doing a level eight or above course. But for a newly married couple, I would recommend that you go for partner of a student visitor's visa. Again, it is situational based. So before assessing, we cannot tell you for sure, but this is just a general rule of thumb. <clears throat> now, with uh, this, uh, having said this, what needs to be done is we, you will, when you apply, when you make an application under partnership category, you will have to show evidence in terms of uh, how your relationship is genuine and stable. And to do this, what you can do is for newly married couples, you can, uh, or if you have had, uh, if you have been living in a relationship, then you can show evidence of um, different things such as if you have joint bank accounts, then that these are the documents that holds a lot of value. So if you have joint bank accounts where both the names are showing, then that is one good document to show as proof that you guys are in a relationship. If you have uh, been living together or if you have lived together somewhere offshore under the same roof, then if you have any documents to prove that, then those documents would also help. If you have just married, uh, if you've just been married and uh, you have had a wedding ceremony, then you would also have a lot of photographs which you can attach as the proof for the partnership. You obviously, if you're married, you'll have the marriage certificate which also will need to go as part of the proof. But basically what you should be looking for is you should be looking for some photographs in which you have uh, traveled together or you have spent some time together maybe in a public place like or a tourist destination if you have photographs from your wedding ceremony then that is also a good uh, thing good document or good evidence to show apart from the photographs you can show your chat history or the phone call history from different times in terms of when you've been calling each other if you're living again if you're living apart uh, it's also advisable to show other documents apart from photographs and chat history and those documents are financial documents so you want to prove that after being in a relationship you have started sharing the financial responsibilities or you have started sharing the financial assets or the liabilities under the joint name. So if you have those documents, then it would be a good proof for you to show that you are in a genuine or stable relationship. So financial documents, insurance documents are, or even if you have had uh, the same address offshore, then those would be uh, documents to show. Apart from that, uh, what also can be shown as part of the proof is uh, the messages that you've shared with each other, maybe wishing you, wishing each other on birthdays or anniversaries on social media platforms like Facebook or Twitter, and where people have acknowledged you by wishing you or congratulating you. So if those wall posts or if those uh, Facebook memories can be printed, and uh, lost with the application that shows that uh, people have, um, I mean, your relationship uh, is or can be proven at a social level as well. So that is that is one other proof that you can show as part of your as part of your evidence. So basically, rather than giving evidence from one area, which is just to give photographs or just to give math certificates what one can do is one can show evidence from different groups like showing the statements or showing the joint accounts, showing the property uh, lease agreements or 
things like that and also showing how um, socially um, how uh, uh, I mean has has people recognized your relationship socially from either showing your post from Facebook or um, just having a social having a photographs in which uh, there are other people apart from you guys uh, maybe in a function or maybe in a event um, so these these are the things you can show in terms of living together basically what you want to show uh, as part of the proof and this is if you're not applying for a resident visa under partnership is that you probably want to try and show at least uh, you probably want to show at least um, for six months of period you have been living together with each other uh, that would be a good evidence to show but in case if you have not been able to live together because either your marriage is new or you had to stay apart in different countries uh, because of your study commitments or because of your work commitments then you have to show evidence in terms of why you lived apart and for the evidence what you can show is the study that you're currently enrolled in and how important that study is for you in terms of uh, making progress in your career and things like that <clears throat> so uh, that's that's something that uh, you can keep in mind so if you have not lived together uh, for a substantial period of time then you can just show evidence of why you lived separately or why you lived apart for that particular time period so when you tell them the reason you have to make sure that you also give them evidence for those reasons. So if I am saying that I lived with my partner apart for the next two or for the last two years because I used to study in New Zealand, then that is my reason. But apart from that reason, I also have to show that I also have to show the evidence for that reason. And that is, I can show uh, the course that I'm enrolled in and uh, the kind of study commitments I have in terms of um, I have in terms of uh, meeting my deadlines for the assignments and things like that but I also have to then show or rather my partner will also have to then show why she was not with me during the time I was studying so if so there has to be a reason for staying apart from both the sides not just from one side so if I'm showing the reason that the reason for staying apart was because of study reasons the partner has also the past partner will also need the reason for staying apart and not coming here and living in New Zealand and that reason could be maybe let's say that she wanted to gain some work experience uh, from offshore if that was the case then she will also have to show the evidence of that so when the partners are staying apart you actually have to show uh, that the uh, that there were good reasons for them to uh, stay apart for the given duration but at the same time they also have to show evidence from both the sides and the information that you provide gets assessed to see whether the period in which both uh, have stayed apart has or may impact their partnership status in future so the more evidence the more circumstantial evidence you can present to show why you had to live apart and you had no other choice for example uh, the more evidence you can show the more reasoning you can show the better your chances are to be assessed uh, as a genuine as, as partners uh, under uh, <clears throat> under the factor of genuine and stable relationship so that's uh, that's a point that you'll have to consider as well so basically uh, coming back to the visa types uh, as I said you have various visa types and uh, the first one of the first two ones for the student visa is you can either apply for a partner of a student work visa and you also have an option to apply for a partner of a student visitors visa in all the cases you will have to prove that you are in a partnership status um, the work visa holders 
can also bring their partners, whether you are on an open search work visa or a post-study employer assisted visa or any other visas, but except there are some uh, rules and regulations that applies to essential skills work visa, which we'll cover in the in the upcoming video. But if you are on a work visa, in most cases, you can apply, your partner can apply and come here and work full time as well with you. The only thing you want to make sure is that you fulfill the partnership requirements, which is you have to show or you have to prove that you are in a genuine and stable relationship and you have been living together. If you have not been living together, then what was the reason for you to stay apart for that period of time? And what is the evidence? So when you are making or when you are preparing any partnership based visas, you want to keep two things in mind. The first is the reason. So if you have stayed apart, what are the reasons? And then you also have to show the evidence. If you have not stayed apart and if you have stayed together and you are in a genuine and stable relationship, then evidence is what you'll have to take in factor. And evidence can come from different places. So if I have 15 photographs of my marriage, then there's no point for me to show 15 photographs. That is not going to make my file stronger. What is going to make my file stronger or application stronger is if I show uh, evidence from different areas. One of the areas could be showing photographs of my marriage, but the other areas could be showing bank statements or showing other liabilities or assets in which we have joint accountability. Also showing uh, the uh, social, uh, how uh, if, if our relationship is recognized socially through Facebook and other things. So basically when you're showing evidence, make sure you're showing evidence in which you have uh, covered different areas. <clears throat> so um, that's uh, that's something you can keep in mind. Base and if you um, are applying for a residency, then uh, you have to obviously make sure that uh, the sponsor or your partner should be on a uh, should be a New Zealand resident or a citizen but in order to prove the partnership you have to make sure that you are in a relationship in which you have been living together for 12 months or more or a minimum of 12 months rather so basically for all the other visa types there is no uh, specific time that immigration New Zealand will ask for in terms of living together as a general rule of thumb six months is a good period after which you can say that you are in a partnership but for resident uh, based application resident based partnership application uh, that is a uh, that is an additional requirement and that additional requirement is that you are supposed to live together uh, under the same roof for a minimum of 12 months before you can claim the partnership so your relationship doesn't only need to be genuine and stable you also have to be living together for 12 months minimum uh, to apply for a partnership based residency application <clears throat> so partnership visas uh, more or less they follow the same process but all of them have one factor in common and that factor is around proving your partnership status so if you can prove your partnership status that is if you are in a relationship that is genuine and stable and you have been living together you uh, have crossed a big barrier of uh, proving that your partner and then uh, depending on what your situation is or what student visa or what, what uh, visa status your uh, partner has you can just apply for that uh, respective category under the partnership visa <clears throat> The other thing you'll have to make sure is uh, your partner's character uh, will need to be uh, will, will will be checked as well. So basically, um, if uh, they should have not been involved in any any uh, offense or crime, uh, and normally this can be proved by showing the police certificates from the countries they have lived in for more than six months in the last 10 years and if the police certificates have no issues or the clean then obviously the character issues have been met as well so the dependent or the person who's coming 
uh, or applying another partnership may need obviously will need uh, medical as well as the character requirements check if they're obviously coming for more than six months or 12 months depending on uh, how long they want to come and visit their partner here or if they want to come indefinitely <clears throat> in case of residency the medical and police both get checked but in terms of um, the partner who's supporting the applicant uh, the character will be checked so basically the police clearance is what they would need uh, so I hope this uh, session was useful and we will continue running these sessions uh, every week in which we try and cover different topics. So if you have any issues or if you have any questions that you'd like to discuss, then you can just give us a call on 0800-287-749. Thank you guys.